projectiles are hella annoying. Let's beat them. First of all, let's discuss the preliminaries. Projectiles exist to not only attack from a distance, but also take up space on the stage and limit options. They can identify traits in the opponent, as well as create new ones through conditioning. All of this is vital to know, but this is all coming from the perspective of using projectiles. Tackling them requires similar know-how, but a different perspective. Enter Sun Tzu and David Serlin, two men of different ages that know a thing or two about the theory of contest. Serlin was responsible for the fighting game Primer playing to win, a guide that appropriates many of Zhu's war concepts and applies them to fighting games. Both tomes are great reads, but right now we want to focus on playing to win's fourth chapter, Attacking by Fire. Serlin points out that the age-old tactic of using fire to mobilize enemies is something that should be done in tandem with another strategy. Fire cannot be reasoned with, and requires no manpower to retain once started. Because of fire's independence, it allows the attacker to apply pressure from two separate points. Additionally, fire's indiscriminate and unwavering nature requires that you find a solution for it, rather than the other way around. You can't scare fire into running away. Sounds a little like projectiles, doesn't it? That's exactly what projectiles are, tools to pressure opponent movement. You need to be particularly aware of this so the opponent doesn't use them to manipulate you into a disadvantageous position. If you can butt heads with them instead of letting them push you around, they're going to have a harder time pushing you off the platform. But that's enough deliberation. In Smash, a rough outline to take in response to projectiles is that of a basic trinity. Shield, jumping, and projectile counters. Let's tackle jumping. Jumping, the act of avoidance, is the most common method of projectile mitigation, but has many glaring weaknesses when used recklessly. You jump into the air to avoid the projectile. You take no damage, but you have put yourself into a disadvantageous position. Even though the opponent has inflicted no percent, they have still won the interaction because you have put yourself into a negative zone. Staying grounded retains your options and gives you the ability to choose among them. It's non-committal. You want to minimize the amount of time you spend in the air. A good way to think about what decisions to take is to ask yourself, what do I risk by doing said thing? If you pull off a jab, you aren't risking much since it's quick and allows you to use any other options relatively quickly. Raw charging a smash attack is a huge risk, since it easily telegraphs, immobilizes you, and prevents the use of other options. Similarly to the example of fire I drew earlier, projectiles forcing you into the air is a way of the opponent forcing you into a poor situation, even if you think you evaded them by not getting hit. All of this said, jumping is not always a bad idea. Staying grounded is a priority, but of course there will always be situations where going airborne is better. It also depends on the projectile you're evading. Jumping over Samus' missiles will have little consequence due to their recovery lag. Trying to preemptively jump over Diddy throwing his banana can have serious ramifications, however. Jumping over projectiles can work as a bait, however. Decent players will often be expecting opponents to try and jump over their own offense, which they will then meet with their own aerial. They think they're controlling their opponent. If you're aware that they're thinking at this level, you can jump directly into your own aerial. Funnily enough, you have controlled them through their own offense. I have a small training exercise in relation to what I've just discussed about jumping. Go to your control setup and turn off all ability to jump, then continually fight a projectile-oriented opponent. This type of training will force you to find ways of getting around projectiles that aren't jumping, which in turn can help you kick the habit of jumping too often. When it comes to specific projectile counters, these are obviously character specific and will need to be learnt and studied. If your character has one, you'll have a bit of homework to do in researching what things your move can get around. But let's get back to being grounded and using what is probably our best tool for countering projectiles, your shield. Shielding keeps you on the floor while negating most of the threat of incoming offense. Think of it as water to the fire. Of course, the downside is, is that it locks you in place and makes you suffer from shield stun when being hit. A relatively small expense, but there is even a solution for that. Power shielding. Movement isn't sacrificed and you can act immediately after blocking, while also retaining your current position as there is far less shield pushback. This is the go-to method of projectile nullification. 
An important point of projectiles is to always retain a proper focus on the opponent when they're employing ranged offense. I know it's obvious, but projectiles are predictable. They don't change off their course once being fired, and they don't adapt. Get proficient at avoiding them with your peripheral vision and watch your opponent's behavior. As Miyamoto Musashi says, you should know the position of your opponent's sword without even looking at it. This behavior is something that can be predicted if you take into account the space the projectile takes up. Villager's gyroid takes up this much space over its duration. Villagers know that you have no space on the stage, so they almost always expect their opponent to go airborne in their attempts to avoid taking damage. There is a reason why Renai always covers the air when employing gyroid. So, the solution is to think one step ahead. Always consider where the opponent's projectiles are making you go, and how you can foil that expectation. Simply running up and shielding gyroid will remove its influence entirely eliminating the on-stage threat and any possibility of you being forced into the air. Village's grab has a pretty slow startup as well, so if he tries to do that in retaliation to your shielding, try out of shield jab. For all the projectiles that someone like Link or Toon Link can lob at you, they're all negated by shielding. If the opponent doesn't have a solid grab game, they aren't going to get very far, despite how intimidating their wall of projectiles looks. It's important to not be distracted by the current threat. Projectiles are so easily deflected. What the opponent is doing or planning behind that smoke screen is what you should be worried about. This is where projectiles can really screw you up, as you begin to become manipulated by their potential, as opposed to their direct influence. If your opponent is an avid projectile user for a large portion of the game, you're going to start expecting projectiles whenever you enter a mid-level range. This causes you to enact defensive or evasive tactics regardless of whether projectiles are present or not, because the threat of projectiles is present, allowing the opponent to capitalize on the resources you'll need to expend to exert such tactics. They will be able to manipulate you simply by moving into a certain range, without needing to commit to using projectiles at all. You will entirely be a puppet on their strings, and this is why I say the best projectiles are the ones that are never thrown. The solution to this is not very complex. Simply standing your ground and proper use of minimalist defensive tactics should prevent you from being manipulated in such a way. The key thing, however, is to be aware that such a tactic exists. It's like rolling from the ledge, a hugely problematic habit that many players have, but once they're made aware of it, they can work to prevent it. These aren't the only methods, though. Rolling gets you around projectiles pretty well, but is extremely predictable in its direction. If your opponent has low recovery on their projectile, you'll be bringing yourself straight to them. Crouching with certain characters gives nullification effects similar to shields, with each character getting different levels of benefit from using it. Smash also has universal aggressive projectile nullification measures. You can dash through item projectiles, or immediately return them when in mid-air. Go check out my Smash Corners video on this for the full breakdown. The understated influences of projectiles, those beyond simple ranged and morale damage, must be understood in order to find the most suitable methods of tackling them. Retain the extraneous traits of incoming threats and apply them to the intent of the user, while still minimizing your commitment and your manipulability. This is how we beat those projectiles.